But I think in about like 90 seconds, I was able to create a web application with a slider, a title, a chart that's super interactive and just really convenient. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where you try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And an engineering challenge that we all are facing today is the ability to work more collaboratively, more remotely, and more accessibly. And to uh, get through that challenge, we brought on David Prita, who is back with us, a solutions marketer from NI. How are you doing, David? Hey, Brandon, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Sure thing. Welcome back. Um, as I just mentioned, you know, NI and LabVIEW in particular have this history of making technology more accessible to a broader range of engineers and developers, and, and they've done that through graphical programming. Uh, of course, we've encountered a lot of different hurdles over the last two to three years uh, that just make doing anything more challenging, much less uh, designing and developing complex systems. So what is in this latest release of LabVIEW, test workflow, et cetera, that sort of helps overcome some of the hurdles of people being at home, working remotely, et cetera? Yeah, so one of the things that, and I did pretty recently, we created our test workflow bundle. So this is NI's uh, software bundle of subscription software. So engineers are able to get the majority of NI's test software at a great bundled price. So that has LabVIEW, GWeb, TestAnd, DDM, and more. Um, and one of the things specifically to talk about and focus is on GWeb development software. So this is a graphical programming environment that allows engineers to create web applications um, using graphical programming in their LabVIEW skills. So, um, you know, not being a web developer, it's really nice to be able to do something to access my test system remotely without having to spend hours, days, weeks uh, learning a whole new set of skills. So it's really convenient. I was going to say, why would anybody want to, to view a LabVIEW based uh, application on the web? I could think of a few reasons. I mean, you know, there's been a few things that have happened in the past few years. Uh, <laughs> remote work, uh, you know, you have a number of long running tests. Uh, if you're, you know, we'll be talking about a temperature application. If you're doing a thermal chamber test, it might be in a hard to reach location. You have a colleague that wants to check in on it. You're working in a team, of course, as we all do. Um, so if you're wanting to check in on your system and make sure like if it's, you know, something goes wrong while you're at lunch or something, you're like, okay, like, let me go back quickly and check on this without needing to waste a whole bunch of time or send a colleague in to go look at it. So uh, getting that access is really convenient and it may not be a necessity, um, but it'll probably save you some time um, in the long run, so. A necessity yet so yeah can we jump right in and see uh what you got what you cooked up for us yeah sure let's go ahead and dive in all right yeah so here we have geo development software it allows you to build web applications for your test and measurement system um so when you open it up it might be something that you're probably used to or familiar with from labview here we have our front panel uh, which is our functional front end or your our ui this is what you actually see and interact with and then here we have our block diagram which is our functional back end um, so here we're going to be building a really simple application um, and that'll sort of build and demonstrate um, the application that we'll be doing after. So on the left here we have our functional palettes, we can enter anything we want, we can enter sliders, um, buttons, charts and graphs, um, anything that we'd really need. I'm going to go ahead and drop in a chart. We're going to be doing sort of like a random number generator, um, but make it a little bit interactive. Um, so to do that, we're going to add in a horizontal slider here as well. And then we can also, you know, add text or whatever we want to our application. Um, and so right here, I'm going to add in, uh, you know, our title, which is a random number generator. And this will be our like very, very simple front end of our UI. Um, and we just see that here. So now let's go to the block diagram. Here we have you know, a while loop showing that our application is going to be running continuously, which is something that we want. And this is how often it will refresh. So we have it at 50 milliseconds. I'm going to go ahead and set it as 500, so every half second, um, just because it's not that necessary to run that quickly. Um, and here we have our unplaced item. So on the front panel, we dropped in a chart and a slider. And we can see that that's already ready to be placed here on the block diagram. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that all in. And uh, here we also have again our you know palettes. Um, let's go to the math section to drop in a random number. And then we'll go back to as well to add in a multiplication symbol. So we just wire this up really quickly. And it's done. Uh, we also have a few other things. We have our data communications uh, VIs. Um, we have more things for data types, um, any sort of loops um, and everything. So, but really quickly, we're able to build the application. Let's go ahead and run it in a browser and we'll see this get started. So here we can see our application running. Um, and as I drag the slider, uh, the numbers increase or decrease depending as I go. So this was, you know, really, really simple application, nothing that you'd actually ever use it for. But I think in about like 90 seconds, I was able to create a web application with a slider, a title, a chart that's super interactive and just really convenient. Totally shareable and collaborative and everything. Yep, yep, yep. If we go here, I'm gonna go into an actual application. Uh, so here I have a temperature monitoring application. You know, this is something that we did in sort of our first video. We were building a temperature monitoring application. Maybe this application is long running. Um, it's a thermal chamber test. It's in a hard to reach location. I have a colleague that wants to check in on it. It's happening in another part of the world. Who knows? Whatever. So here I built a much more advanced UI, you know, temperature monitor. Something that's also really great about this is that I can control it as well. In this application, I've set, you know, temperature limits. So if I wanted to be warned, if, you know, we're exceeding a certain range with this application, I can send those limits back and change them on the web so I can control my lab view application. And then we have our system status, uh, all that information right here. This VI is also set up if you see these like boxes that come up, so it'll automatically adjust to the screen size that it's on. So if I'm on a phone or a tablet or a laptop, it'll adjust to the size screen. So it keeps everything really clean. And then here we have our block diagram. There's kind of a few things going on, but it's nothing too crazy. We have here, you know, we have to receive the data, of course, somehow. So here we have open our system link APIs. It's really just three calls. We're pulling in a number of data types, but if you look at it, it's basically a one, two, three. So here we're opening up communication with our server, pulling in a specific data type, and then we're going to be reading it right here and then publishing it to our graph and our chart. So that's kind of like the layout. And this is just receiving it on the GWeb end. So here we're getting the alarm, the status, and then the temperature numbers. Here we're also going to be doing some sending of the data. So if we wanted to change the limits, we're going to be using uh, messages for that. But you only need to set up communication once. It's really easy. It's a prepackaged API. You can just drag and drop it, and it's pretty quick. Here, I still have my full LabVIEW application, and that's not changing. You still need to do that. I mean, it's still doing, you know, all the hardware connection and everything. You wouldn't want to have like the web browser or that application loading your entire system and storing all your data. It'd kind of be a lot and it'd really overwhelm. So your LabVIEW system is doing most of the work. I'd, I'd save my data here. I would do any form of like FFT or like complex analysis, probably here, but I'd send just, you know, the information that's really important or timely to the G web to the web application. I mean, it's pretty much a mirror of what we have. And then on this end, uh, we have similarly, you know, we're setting up the communication and then we're creating opening that data type. And then as the data gets collected, it's then sent over uh, using the system link APIs. If we want to go ahead and run this VI we can go ahead and hit start and we can see our application running. And then if I go to the web, I can see the same application running here as well. Just refresh it to get it going again. If I like change the temperature or touch the temperature sensor, we see that changing. And then here we have like a high and low limit of 90 and 80. Uh, so if I wanted to change that to like 95 and 70, we go hit send new limits and we can see that adjust here. And then on the LAVI program, of course, is got sent back. So here you see that change as well. I could do this on my phone. You can see it here as well too. See it now, yeah. Yeah. And you can see like it adjusted to the screen size. So everything is like pretty comfortably fit to what I would want. It's pretty convenient. In this whole test workflow environment, I think we've just sort of scratched the surface. You know, what else is is available there that we didn't 
interface with today? Yeah, so GWeb's, you know, just one of the parts. There's, you know, six products, depending which version you choose. So uh, in test workflow, you have uh, DDM, Test and Flex Logger, and Instrument Studio, Lavi and GWeb, uh, which we just talked about. So you get a few things. Uh, you know, many times our customers have gone to Lavi to solve every single one of their problems, whether they're taking a measurement, trying to do some data analysis, or sequence a number of tests and measurements. And with Test Workflow, we're really trying to provide users a lot more uh, functionality and convenience up front. You know, Lavi, you have to do a lot of building. But with FlexLogger, if you want to do a measurement, it's application software. There's no development required. All you have to do is just configure the device and you're straight into logging and viewing your data. With Diadem, it's our data analysis software. Once you load in your data, you can drag and drop to create charts and graphs that are really convenient, much faster than you would in some other thing like Excel. Test stand, that's a part of our test workflow pro. And with that, you know, you're able to create a sequence of tests, uh, which is really important for validation and production. You can configure a number of lobby steps, also call in code from C or Python or .NET, generate reports, do unit tracking, parallel execution. If you're working in production, you want to go really fast. So it provides you all those functionality out of the box. And we could talk more about the other software, but you know what this really does is give customers access. It's no longer just like, okay, what software is the one that I can afford and choose? Uh, with test workflow, you're kind of given more options at a better uh, bundled price. Well, this is all really good stuff, David. I'm excited to see how the community takes advantage of all these new features of, of LabVIEW. Um, more accessible, more collaborative, a lot there, a lot of opportunity and potential. For those who are interested in finding out more about what we've gone over, test workflow, some of the new Python capabilities, and then all the other elements of, of the suite that you just talked about, where can they go to find more information? Yeah, definitely go find more. If you're looking for LabVIEW, of course, go to ni.com slash LabVIEW. If you're looking to learn a little bit more about test workflow, go to ni.com slash test workflow. It's all one word. Um, feel free to Google it as well. So you can definitely find more information there. Awesome. Thanks. We look forward to having you back on and talking a lot, a lot more about what you guys are doing over in the world of graphical programming. Awesome. Thanks for having me.